Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. I finally got out of the house, did a little shopping for my vacation that's coming up. By vacation, I mean we're gonna go to a condo and socially distance in a condo, but at least it's at the beach, right? I got my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And if you haven't know, pl heard, my plan next week is I'm going to Florida with my cousins. But we're going to stay at the condo. Sorry, my shorts are wedging up. Um, hang out at the beach, socially, ugh, socially distancing. We're going to cook in the condo. We're going to get takeout food, but we're going to kind of lay low, which I think is a good plan. But I need to, I'm on the hunt for sandals. So last fall winter when I got rid of all my shoes I got rid of all my sandaly sandals like beach shoes flip-flops so I was in Target these were on clear or not Target um Marshalls and Home Goods and I got a pair I love these squishy sandals that have a nice arch I wear size nine and they were on clearance for nine dollars which I thought was good especially for Tommy Hilfiger although I'm not a name brand person this per se but they fit that's what I look for. Do they, are they comfortable and do they fit? And I have a lot of navy blue. So I grabbed a pair of sandals. I got the boys, which you can kind of see. <laughs> a cat tree for Alex, really. It has what I want. It's not super high at all, but it has a place he can get into. He seems to like to get into the cat carrier and sleep. So we're gonna try this and see if it works. I haven't decided if it's going to go in the living room or my office because I'm in the office a lot, but I don't know. I got more hand towels, dish towels. They're, di they're I think these are dish towels. <gasps> they're super nice cotton and they're yellow and they'll match my kitchen. And I know I'm obsessed. I can't help it. But these are nice and big and plush and they were $7.99 and they're 100% cotton. So they're very absorbent. Okay, I have a problem. I know. I mean, I don't think it's a problem. I love hand towels. I'll go through and get rid of some of the other yucky ones that I have. I use them a lot instead of paper towels. We should all be clear on that. And then a totally non-essential, I didn't need it, but boy, I wanted it, notebook for my desk. Can we please look at this giraffe, guys? And it's a hard book, spiral bound, lined for all the note taking I do at work. And I think it's fabulous. And it was $5.99. So I don't think that's a bad deal at all. There's even a little design on the back. I don't know how many pages it has. 160, which is good. And this is like a regular size notebook. So, and the cat tree was actually a really good deal. Um, I've been looking around for them. I wanted something a little taller, but I could almost put this in my bay window and they might enjoy that, but it gets hot in there. So we'll see. It's heavy, but it was $59 and I don't think that was bad for a cat tree. Um, they've been like when I see them at the pet stores are over a hundred and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Now I'm going to go meet my friend Teresa and we're going to get a pedicure and then I'm going to go home and do something. I don't know what, something. Let's see what today holds. I need somebody to explain this to me. This person is driving down the road with three mattresses strapped on top of a RAV4. What? Three mattresses strapped on the top of a car. Crazy. Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you something. If you're like me, I bought strawberries today. I bring them home, I rinse them under cold water, I cut them up, put them in the fridge. Well, my niece was talking to me about how she washed hers once. She uses something different. I just use vinegar. And I want to show you the amazing yuck it gets off our fruit. I just put, you know, like a tablespoon maybe two in a bowl, glass bowl with some cold water. And then I dump my strawberries in. I don't even like, I don't take the stems off or anything. And then I let them sit in this water for maybe 10 minutes. So I really get in here and stir up the vinegar. I can tell you I, I barely smell the vinegar in here. 
but it's enough to take the yuck off this fruit. All right, so we're gonna let it do its thing for 10 minutes and then I'll be back. All right, guys, we are pulling out the strawberries. It's been about 10 minutes. And I'm putting them into a colander on the other side of the sink here. I'll rinse them off with some cool water just to get any of the vinegar off. But I, it doesn't taste. It can barely smell it. But wait till you see this water. So, do you see how dirty that water is? Blah. That, and there's all this dirt and soot at the bottom. Do you see it? See if I can get it moving. Ooh, so gross, so gross. So it definitely was worth a few minutes. Now I'm just gonna run some cool water, like I said, over them. And then I can cut them and store them or put them in the fridge, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cut them and put a little bit of my uh, sweetener on it. So I think I might later make a lemon pound cake keto version and then have some strawberry shortcake. All right, friends, well, I hope that was inspiring to you to wash your fruits and veggies too. All right, well, I'm just gonna let them sit here in some cold water and slice them all up. We are having some steak. Now, I went and got a strip steak. It's not as thick as the ones I get from Costco, but I think it's okay, it'll be fine, but I need to get to Costco and get my four pack. Plus this was like $10 a pound. I know I get four or three really thick steaks and they're like $6 a pound at Costco or something. They were. All right, I am using just some Longhorn Steakhouse seasoning. I like this and it has a bit of a kick to it, which again, I enjoy. So this has been brought to room temperature. You wanna make sure your steaks or meats or whatever you're grilling is at room temperature. I put a little ooh, little extra on this side cause I'm getting ready to flip it over just in case it gets on the back. Then I'm gonna put some on this side and I'm not, I have got the grill on but it is not up to temperature yet. So that's fine. That'll season while it sits here. And then what we're gonna do is look at the size of this asparagus. It's kind of big for my taste, but that's what they had. And so it also grills nice when it's that fat, it doesn't fall through. So I'm just putting a little olive oil on here. And then I'm gonna put a little salt and a little pepper. And then I'm gonna toss it up. And just get everybody nice and coated in the salt, pepper, and olive oil. And I'm just going to let it sit here to get the tips. It just gives it a nice flavor. And I'm going to grill this and I'm going to grill that. And I filled my grill with half of a uh, chimney of charcoal. So I will show you when I get it out there. All right. I'm cleaning house over here. But here's the guy's new cat tree. Alex is back there because there's treats involved. I'm just trying to make it enticing. I put some catnip on it. I put some treats. Wellington's still outside and I need to run and sweep, running the vacuum and sweeping and putting the cat cage away. Okay, here's more cat, but I'm so excited he's actually laying in it. I put catnip and everything, but he's just enjoying himself, but it's a little small for his fat self, but that's okay. That's okay, we love him. Ah, I'm so excited. Yum. The asparagus will cook much faster than the steak, but once it's done, I'll move the asparagus more to the middle. Um, but like I said, it's a thin steak, so it's not gonna take long to cook. I could have put a little more charcoal, but that's okay. This is fine. It's gonna be delicious. Okay guys, we're gonna do a little sewing. Let me show you what I'm doing. I hope the lighting is better. I'm trying out something new. But I got this fabric which I love, is blue and blue floral. And then the lining is this soft blue with stars. And I took my book and I measured it. 
for this size book. So this is just going to be a beach read. So I measured it out and I determined that I was going to cut these pieces six inches across by nine inches tall. And then over here I'm attaching a ribbon because I'm going to put some Velcro on it to close it up. So what I did is I just clipped it with a quilt pin. So I'm going to sew this like I have been sewing all of them together. This seam to the bottom seam and then we're going to turn it inside out and then the velcro that I have is um, iron on. But the point of this video, I've already showed you how I make these bags. I'm going to show you how I box the bottom of a bag. We're going to do a one inch box, I believe. Maybe an inch and a half, but around an inch bottom so the book slips down in it better because it's a thicker, it's a thicker book. So let me sew this all together and I will show you how I box the bottom. Right, I got everybody sewed together and my corners set up, but I wanted to show you how I how I choose to box my corners. So what I do is I have it all sewn up. This is the bottom, so you leave your hole because this is where you're going to flip it inside out. But what I do is I flatten this, flatten this out, the bottom, right? And I make sure my seam on this side, I can feel it on that side. And you'll feel them line up. That's the important part at this juncture. Now, I don't have a corner ruler. But what I do, and this doesn't have to be perfect, but I lay it out on the... And I wash my hands, but I am licking my fingers to try to get the, car the carpet, the fabric. You can iron this, but this is such a small little corner. And then I take my quilting ruler and I line it up with the seam I sewed down the middle and I went about an inch and a half now I'm just going to take marker so you can see it and it's inside out but normally I would use I use pencil like a mechanical pencil or chalk or something and then on this type of situation, I am using pins, not by, not the quilter's qu um, clips. And then we'll bring the sewing machine back. And then you just sew across that line. And that's why you've clipped it and pinned it to hold it in place. Now, there's a million other ways to do a boxed corner. This is what I have found to be the easiest for me. And then you want to get your needle right up on that line and back stitch, front stitch. And let me get this needle out of our way. Front stitch, back stitch, across. Now this seam's not going to get a whole lot of stress, so I'm not going to worry too much about doubling and tripling it. But if you think your books are heavier, you could. And then all I'm going to do, give myself about a quarter of an inch and cut that off because it's bulky. Oh, you totally missed that. Let me show you. <laughs> I wasn't even on camera. Sorry. All right. Well, let me go do this one and then I'll show you how I cut them. And again, we're on the inside. So cutting, it doesn't need to be nothing fancy here. But. You don't want to sew over ever your um, needles. It's not good for your sewing machine and it's not good for the needles. All right, so I'm just clipping the threads. And I'm using a light thread here so you won't really see it. But you see this end? And that's my seam right there. I'm going to give myself about a quarter of an inch and just cut that tip off because it makes... Um, bulk when you turn it inside out and then let me sew these up real quick now the side with the um, fusible fleece it's a little diff more challenging to stitch across but it'll be okay you kind of just want to go slow get it done and this one's probably not straight, but that's okay. And if you don't get all of your little threads, again, that's okay, because you're going to turn this inside out. 
and then I'm just cutting off a quarter of an inch and so you'll get these little triangle bits now some people I know and I've seen videos they cut a, a triangle or a rectangle out and then line them up that way another way to do it there's no right and wrong it's just you need to get a box bottom but this is how I learned to do it and this way is just easier for me so I cut my threads take the needle out I did not sew over it I had enough room and cut the corner now once ooh, sorry trying to move my sewing machine here so you can see, let me see if I can fix this light. Give me a little more. Does that look better? Maybe. I actually took a light on a clamp and put it on the door. Okay, so my four sides are done. We have one sewing step left. And that's just, well, two steps actually. I'm going to turn it. You want to leave yourself the bottom always big enough to flip it. I need to sew up this bottom seam and then I'm going to top stitch around the top to make it more decorative and more finished. I like to make it look finished. I left this ribbon super long because I didn't know how long I, where I wanted to put the Velcro and it's, you know, fine. It's ribbon. Okay. Before you start doing anything, I use... This came with some fiber fill. You can use a chopstick. You can get your fingers down in there. But you just want to pop out these bottoms. And not too tight, but enough so where they have some, you know, dimension to them. Because this is your only opportunity to do this. And then I almost, I mean, it's good enough, but it's not quite 100% perfect where the back seam, the bottom seam, but it's fine. And then, I really hope my book fits. This is just a dry run. I haven't fi finalized this pattern, and by that I mean measurements. There we go, and there we go, and this one lined up really good. You just want to be slow and steady and methodical. Now, the corners up here I can reach without shoving my hand in that lining and those lined up pretty good too so i'm just popping them out and i'm going to just crease this with my finger and stitch that close you can do this honestly you can do it um hand stitching just time consuming but it can be done and this is on the inside, so I'm not overly concerned about it. And it's for me. If this was somebody else's and I was gifting it, I would definitely take more care. But it's for me and I don't care. Did I? I lost my thread. Well, that was stinky, like stinkerson. Every once in a while this happens. I'm trying to make it so you can see. Um... And then I think I'm going to make one notebook size for that notebook I bought today if I decide to travel with that. All right, let's try this again. My thread got stuck. All right, so back to finger pressing. It's not a big deal. And again, you can, if you're making a gift of this, I might hand sew it just to, you know, make it look tight prettier on the inside if I were to make these for presents, which I do plan on Christmas time making these as gifts, which is kind of why I'm trying to come up with some patterns for different sizes, because my plan is to purchase some books for some family and then put them inside one of these. All right, so I'm just turning it inside out. I'm not sure if this is going to fit, but we're going to see before I go any further, and then I'll take it to the ironing board and press um, around the top here. I really want it to be a nice seal, a seam to sew on. But for right now, let's see if I can get this book in here. Maybe not, guys. I might have to try again and make it just a tad bit bigger. Because that is a little tight. But let's see. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to do one more. Just a little bigger. It fits, but it's tight. It's a little too tight. But we're down the right garden path, right? So it goes in there, but you see how tight it is? So I think what we'll do, instead of 6 by 9, I'm going to do an 8 by 10 cut is what I'm going to do. And box the bottoms, but I will keep this for a smaller book or really any any uh, anything I want. I could put sunblock in here and then I'm going to do that, flip it over with the Velcro and attach it. So let me cut a bigger because that's a little tight, although I could do probably one inch bigger and do a seven by, let me see, is that good? Yeah, so that's a good thickness at the bottom. So let's do a seven inch by a 10 inch, seven by 10. We'll try that one. All right, I did a bigger one. I went with the eight by 10. It's a little big, so I think, I'll show you. It's fine, I'll use it, but it definitely is big for this size book. So I think on the next one, I will do the um, seven by 10, which is fine. But we are going to top stitch this now. Well, we'll start here and we're just going to stitch around the top using a regular straight stitch and then I will iron on the velcro and show you the finished product. I have to get the velcro from downstairs but that's just what it looks like finishing off the top so I can slide my book in here and then I will Velcro. I will do the 10 inches for the size book because I like that it folds over and then I will put the Velcro like piece down here somewhere and do like a long piece. So depending on how wide the book is, I have books that will fit into this bag. We're just gonna do all different size bags. Probably not this bag. Now this one doesn't fit around here, so we are gonna have to be real fancy. I might say fancy, but we're just finagling this on too. And then we're just gonna have to go real slow around to get the top stitching done. This would also be great for a sleeve for like a water bottle. Especially if you think it's going to sweat. The thing is, it's cotton, so you're definitely going to want it to dry before you, you know, get so it doesn't get moldy. But I think it'll be good for sunglasses, a smaller book, a notebook. <sighs> All right. That was a thick. All right, well, I gotta rethread and then turn this fan off. It's hot up here tonight. This is my office slash craft space. But I went over a really thick bump and it, um, broke the thread, which is fine. I will finish this out and show you the finished product. Okie dokie, smoky. we have it all ironed on. Um, you just need to follow the specific directions for whatever brand of iron or Velcro you buy. I did have to trim it. What I'm gonna do with this one is make it a pencil bag. So I measured and I pinned and I'm gonna put this right here on the Velcro and it will hold the top shut like a little lunch bag, but it'll hold like pencils and pens and stuff. I thought that was cute. But what we need to do is cut off this excess ribbon. I'm gonna give myself about this much. 
And then what you do is, oop, turn the fan off, is you take a lighter and you very gently melt the end of this ribbon and it will keep it from fraying. It works with any kind of grow gain or like non-cotton ribbon. So, and then it just cools real quick. Fold it down. And you have Velcro. How cute is that? And watch, it'll hold standard size pens. It probably won't hold like pencils, but standard size pens, no problem. Isn't that adorable? And it matches. And on this one, I can fit my book and a notebook. So this will be a little set. But we're going to do the same thing here. Give us about, you know, a half an inch. And then real gently just melt it. Nothing major just keeps it from fraying. And if in the future it starts to fray, you can just remelt it. But this is gonna be my beach book, and I can bring my notebook along in case I need to take notes of some sort. And now that holds my book and protects it along with my pens and pencils to write in my notebook if I need to take some notes or something. How fun is that set, guys? And it's great for vacation. And I have plenty of this Velcro. I used the Velcro brand is what it is. It is actual Velcro brand. I get this at Joanne. It was $6.99 and I had a 50% off coupon. So it was like three something. Or $5.99. I think I paid $3.19. But there's plenty of pieces left for me to do other projects. So I'll store this in my sewing box for something coming up. I'll keep these little pieces of ribbon, which would make great bookmarks by the way, but I have a bookmark for my trip. So I will choose better pens, different pens. <laughs> These I just grabbed out of my planner thing. I'll grab some pens and pencils and any kind of office supplies I might need and just tuck them in here. And then these will go right in my beach bag and I will be ready for the beach. Perfect. All right, guys, we're, <laughs> we're gonna end the night with these crazy cats. He's falling off the back of the couch. Poor little guy and your chunkiness and little Mr. Wellington. All right, it is time. Right, boys? Oh, hi, Dub. Alex. Hi, buddy. You, you're, you're falling off, sweetie. Oh, God love him. All right, well, I will fix him, and I hope you guys have a good day.